Well, good morning. I'm Jeff Baker. I'm with the Entrepreneur Source, and I'm an alternative career coach. And I'm going to explain that uh, in these next few uh, slides. So uh, just get started. So I really wanted to include this uh, this little quote at the top. What great things would you accomplish? Would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? And it's a question. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that failure can and won't happen, but what you want to do is keep your eyes on something else. And, and what would you do if, if failure were, to, were just not going to happen for you? That was, that's really what the, the purpose of, of what this quote is about. Uh, so the, the next page, what does career mean in the new career economy? And here's some of the things most people would be first uh, would be forced to, to look at particularly those who are in a maybe a corporate job or in a job that they maybe a career that they are questioning or maybe thinking about doing something else uh, in a person's life on average you could be expected to go through probably six to eight career changes job changes in a working lifetime you may go through three different redefine, redefinements of, your, of yourself in your career life at least three times. And at this point, uh, and I would say Silicon Valley is a good example of this, 75% of Americans can expect to work after retirement, however you define that. I know a number of people that are approaching 70 or if not already in their 70s that are still still working. Not necessarily because they have to, but because they want to, they want to stay busy. But in, in many instances it's, it's because they still they still need to. So uh, looking at the next page here, um, crossroads and options. For people that are looking to exploring the different options for them in a, in a uh, career situation. Um, I, I had to sort of manipulate this slide a little bit. That's why this is kind of a little bit off-center. I had to add that last one because that was, that's definitely an option that a lot of people are looking at there, particularly if they're unemployed. They're, they're playing the stock market. They're looking to their investments to at least keep them afloat. Um, we also have what's called the gig economy, where it's more, you know, people driving Uber or working for DoorDash or something like that to sort of help make ends meet while they're in between jobs. What did you call that? The gig economy. Gig. Yeah. Um, gig is a job. Yeah, that's that's what it's, it oh, comes. Yeah. It kind of comes from the music industry. Really. Yeah, yeah, gigs. Right. Another example would be to go to Starbucks and be a barista. That way, at least you get health insurance. Yeah. You bring in a few bucks and try to get a job somewhere. I've heard they actually do have a pretty good retirement program. Um, so another option would be to go back to school, but that's going to take some time, depending on what you want to do. And Audrey, I guess, could probably speak to that as well. Um, you could stay where you are, or if you're if you're unemployed right now, you could continue to try to find work in the corporate job market. Um, you could start your own business from scratch, and there are certainly some inherent risks with that. Um, you're, you know, depending on how you want to go about it, you could be a, your own uh, entrepreneur and, and work by yourself and, and do your due diligence, and uh, maybe, you, maybe you might be successful. But again, it's going to take some time and investment. Um, another option would be acquire ex an existing business, and that could be uh, maybe a mom and pop business that is in the process of uh, maybe they're going to leave the area, or uh, they just want to sell it for whatever reason. You can do that. That could be a little bit pricey, and again, you're inheriting something that you may or may not know anything about, and that's all going to take some time. And then the last option here is. Really, that's that's the uh, the space that I work in. And consider franchising. If you go to the next page. Um, 
new ways to thrive in the, in the, the new career economy through franchise business ownership. And the Entrepreneur Source, the company that I work with, is we work with upwards of 200 different businesses in over 80 different industries. Um, that's sort of a dynamic list um, because there, are, there's, there is a vetting process. You know, we don't we don't just uh, accept people that apply. You know, two weeks later, um, you know, I want to I want to work with you guys, and, and uh, that's that. It's more. Um, a process of approval that they would need to go through to find out if they're a good fit for us and if, if there is a, a sector that is uh, needed in the businesses that we work with and, and present to uh, potential clients. So one of the things about franchising is that you're in business for yourself and not by yourself. There is a uh, support network that you would be working with, people that uh, know how the business operates and can be there for you for any questions and to help you get off the ground and, and to talk to you and talk to you about funding, um, how to conduct your business, how to get clients, um, and, and questions like that. No one person can build a successful business alone. Your business requires a team that is as committed as you are to the business and its success. And that's really what franchise business ownership is about. And of course, a lot of people think of uh, just a few things when they think of franchising. They think of the corner 7-Eleven, or maybe a Togo's, or uh, McDonald's, or something like that. But as you can see on this next page here, this, uh, this little pie chart, um, there's a lot of different sectors that are um, represent the businesses that we work with. For the most part, there are some that are probably not included here, but this is how the franchise landscape is, is divided up right now. And, and you do see that the largest uh, slice there is the fast food market, so there's certainly a large sector where that's concerned. There are over 5,000 franchises in over 80 different industries, and I said we, only, we work with 200 of them upwards, um, but they include the home, vehicle, office, industrial, and, and of course retail. And during their last recession in the early 2000s, franchises gained 8% of the market share. So on the next page, this, this is really, gets into the more, more of the details of, of uh, what I do, and again, this is sort of the 30,000 foot view of uh, the service that I provide. So starting with step one, uh, when, I, when I start working with a client, I just take the time and uh, it's really a, a process of developing a business relationship, getting to know them, understanding what their skills, their interests, their particular goals at, at that point in time in their life what they're looking to achieve. They may have an ongoing job search happening at the same time, and this is certainly something that they can pursue on the side if they would, they would like. Um, it is a complimentary coaching session. Um, the, 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 the entire process is complimentary. Um, I get paid by the franchise business community. Um, so there's, if, if anyone, that I would be talking to is concerned about a potential cost. Uh, I usually put them at rest pretty early on in the discussion, letting them know that it doesn't cost them any, anything other than um, a little bit of a time commitment. That's all that I ask. And we talk about goals, lifestyle, income, wealth, and equity, and we focus on those things. We don't necessarily uh, talk about finding the perfect job or the perfect business for them. Uh, but we want to find something that's going to uh, be a benefit or a enhancement to their existing lifestyle. And, and hopefully put them in a better position than they were in uh, before they started talking to me. And then step three, uh, my job, you know, at some point in our discussion, my job is to research um, two to three different business models to present to them. And uh, then, then I would 
leave it to the client to uh, speak to the various businesses um, on a regular basis. They would be probably having two, maybe perhaps three meetings to determine if, if, if this is a good fit for them. And then uh, step four um, in, this, in that part of the process is I would be meeting with them on a regular basis, perhaps once a week, to see how things are going. Uh, plan education and validation of business opportunities. Uh, also speaking with funding partners and uh, comparing the particular business models against their current goals. Do you want questions now or at the end? Um, I would say, you know, ask any questions as I'm going along here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. So you mentioned um, funding business partners. How does that work? Well, we work with about six or seven different funding partners that um, during what we call the validation process, it's, that's when they're speaking with the various businesses that I've presented to them. Um, they talk to them about what funding options are available. So we're talking basically about basically loans? This would be like maybe an SBA loan or a 401k rollover. But there's sort of other subcategories that also could be discussed. Um, different ways of, of uh, financing the business. So could you give us a, like a range of um, the investment cost uh, into a franchise that it takes? That's, that's pretty... It's a pretty uh, large range. Um, it could it could be anywhere from twenty thousand to upwards of three hundred or four hundred thousand, depending on the franchise and, mm -hmm. and the, the business at hand. Is McDonald's really well? McDonald's. Ones? See, a lot of the, the the big players in the franchise world do their own franchising. They have their own franchising department. So McDonald's would be one of those. And now they're very exclusive about who they select. Mm. Um, in fact, that what I have heard is you have to be sort of a proven successful McDonald's franchise owner already to get a, a new franchise. Um, and a lot of a lot of the, the bigger franchises do that as well. Um, to think of, uh, Starbucks would probably be another one. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a lot of them do their own. Do you represent uh, smaller franchises? Uh, they are smaller, but they're not necessarily smaller, but they're probably ones you haven't heard of. Um, there's a, a number of them that you have, like an example would be Amco Transmissions would be one. I mean, like Pete's? No, Pete's does their own as well, as best, you know, uh, at, like Starbucks. Okay. You know, the, this group is looking for a printer, and, and I would assume that you could set somebody up as a, as a franchise owner. For there, print, right? Yeah, there are a couple of uh, printing printing uh, franchises that I that we do work with right <coughs> if you go to the next page there's a quote at the bottom of 95 percent of our clients explore options they would not have discovered on their own that's on the next page um, and what what that really means is there's uh, a lot of uh, franchises that people might have either sort of glossed over or dismissed right, you know, early on. And then at some point they've come back to it and decided, you know, this doesn't really sound like a bad idea. I kind of like their business model. So that's a, I, I hear this a lot. And uh, I've worked with, with clients that have discovered that. And uh, one of the things I, I do need to say is I'm a, I'm a coach and I'm not a broker. Uh, there's a, there is a, not so subtle difference between what a broker does and what I do. I, I do some brokery, brokery kinds of things, um, but a broker is licensed to sell franchise businesses. I'm not, um, and they are. Uh, there's a little, maybe a little more higher pressure with a broker. Um, for for a coach, it's more of a walking them through a process of <coughs> education, discovery, and awareness bring them to a point of clarity where it's really a choice that they're making and not something that I'm trying to force feed them. And lastly, um, you know, this is just a question or you know, that most of the clients that I work with ask themselves at some point is, uh, do I want to control my own destiny? And 
and uh, you know, the ones that decide to go forward are the ones that have answered yes to that question. So with that, yes. Can you um, can you give an example of a success story? Um. I'm still kind of new to the business, so I don't have any to draw on my own, but I certainly could point to some some peers. In fact, uh, the, the person that coached me, um, she has had, well, I'm one. I mean, one of the franchise options would uh, is Entrepreneur Source. This is actually a franchise that I, that I own. And uh, I actually met her through an outplacement agency that I was working with about a year or so. At the, I'm, I'm a former IT guy, and I was actually looking into the IT job market to see if I could just continue doing that. But the more I thought about it, and the more roadblocks I ran into, uh, I kept asking myself, do I really want to go back into this? And my, you know, I was facing a lot of job burnout, and decided that my heart just wasn't in it. So I started talking to her, and she coached me through the process. Uh, probably took about three or four months uh, from start to finish. And uh, this wasn't the only uh, option that she presented to me. There were two or three other ones that we, we talked about. And I looked into those, and one of them actually was an IT franchise. Um, and I just decided I just, I just couldn't go there. <laughs> and, you know, uh, make a long story short, I ended up doing what she's doing. Excellent. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. So when you go and counsel somebody, when you present all the options on page three, you know, crossroads and options, mm -hmm. play stock, go to school, corporate America, start business, acquire an existing business, and consider franchise. Um, I don't know if you're experienced enough to guide somebody who perhaps isn't right for franchising. That's I know the difference between seeing somebody who would consider franchising or guiding them into something or suggesting to them maybe based on what their goals you know are you help coach them into a more appropriate uh, option. Right. And sometimes during the during the process they do decide that you know what um, for whatever reason, maybe their life circumstances, or maybe they just have come to a point where franchise business ownership isn't for me. Um, I mean, you or, have a criteria. Um, I, I would pretty much present this as a uh, as the, the, what options are available to them. Um, I would say that they don't necessarily make the decision right then and there. One of the one of the advantages of having a complimentary coaching service is you know it is free of charge to them and and a lot of them will say well it's it's at least worth checking out to work with you to see if, if franchise business ownership is for me um, and again these are just the options that anybody's really faced with in, in the job scene and I just make that you know show that to them and I would say that. A lot of times, they don't look at necessarily just one and say, "I'm going to go with that." But they'll they'll say, "Well, I, let's let's explore this, but I'm also going to be interviewing for, you know, what I do, and what I, you know, in, in, in the corporate world or uh, maybe the private sector or whatever." I had a pretty good idea what you do. This this is helpful to fill in the, the gaps. What I was not aware of is the fact that you have sources to help get uh, financing to. To buy the franchise because yeah, so because in my mind the, the major issue with franchise is that you got to buy into the franchise where you get the money to do that if you don't have it right so apparently you've got financial well, sources or something. and again those aren't necessarily uh, the only sources available a lot of the franchises also have their their funding um, but, part of it too that, that they can buy up a number of them don't mm -hmm. but there are some that do and if they choose not to work with the funding partners that we work with they certainly have that option as well do you find that uh, quite a number of people that start out thinking they know what they're going to do really get in something that's completely out of left field from what they what that's they that's where that 95 percent quote comes from yeah um, 
a lot of times they'll you know they'll go by what they what they think they know. Um, sometimes they'll say you know based on what they've seen, what they know about franchising, they'll say you know Seven Eleven or a McDonald's. I, I want I want something like that, or I don't want that. You know, as the case may be. Um, but then what I you know part of what I do is help them to explore other options and say you know I never I never I never knew this business existed. But this looks like a good fit for who I am and, and what I do. Um, sometimes it's not even a situation where past experience is, is really required. Because a lot of times all they're going to be responsible for is managing their business, but they're not going to be necessarily working in the business. That's, there are owner oper operator opportunities as well, but a lot of times it's you're just kind of reinventing yourself in the sense that you're going to be running the business, but you have people working under you that are going to be uh, working in the business. Okay. A good example of that would be like home health care, something like that. So, do you, do you find that most of the, of the, the franchises that you work with are not people that are going to be owner operators? I'm sorry, what was it? They're not, um, not going to be owner operators. They're going to be just. I don't know what the what the division would be in that, but well, one of the my my business is, is I'm an owner and an operator. I don't, although you, I could if I wanted to have some underlings, you know, do a lot of the, the footwork that I, that I end up having to do, but it's, it's not necessary. Any other questions? All right, very good. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Sure.